team. So that's kind of interesting. He just he just puts on the Pikachu there, uh, which actually kind of works well with Azumarill, with the Lightning Rod support, the Fake Out support. And on Francois' team, I see something really interesting as well. <laughs> uh, I am assuming that's a Mega Agron. Yeah, Francois is bringing the Cresselia Agron, Tapu Bulu, Milotic, Lander, Asterion Form, and the Heatran. And Jamie Boyd is bringing Azumarill, Clefairy, Gengar, Komoo, Tapu Bulu, and Pikachu. Yeah. So really interesting mix of Pokemon here. Tapu Bulu across both sides. But what do you think that Mega Agron is going to be doing? I, I really don't know, but I assume that with Cresselia, it's gonna go it's gonna go for se to set up Trick Room and just just heavy slam a lot of Pokemon, uh, Rock Slide. Um, I know Mega Agron is really slow and it's really powerful as well. And if I look at Jamie's team, he doesn't really have a lot of like heavy slam switches at all. Um, he's got the Dual Fairy. Uh, Gengar doesn't want to take those. Bulu doesn't want to take those. He actually has Triple Fairy. <laughs> uh, and Pikachu doesn't want to take any attack, basically. No, exactly. That little Pikachu, probably more built for taking down Pokemon like Tapu Finney. So it might be a good Pokemon choice here against that Milotic as well. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if Jamie goes with this uh, Azumarill mode here. Uh, I don't think you want to go with Komao here, because he has the Tapu Bulu on the other side, as well as the Cresselia. Yeah. Uh, and I think maybe the, the Pikachu, Azumarill, Clefairy combination is looking really good on, uh, on, Boyd's, uh, on Boyd's side. Yeah, I cannot wait to see what our trainers are going to be bringing for round one here in Sheffield. It's going to be exciting. Hopefully it's going to be electric with that little Pikachu. I would love to see Pikachu jump out here. But it's going to be Azumarill and Clefairy instead. The fairy combination here from Jamie Boyd posing Francois Agron. Yes, we get to see that Ooh. Pokemon with Milotic as well. Yeah, so we see immediately, we see the, the Azumarill that I expected from, uh, from Jamie's side here, and we see the Agron, which is immediately threatening this Clefairy, of course. Uh, I really don't know my Mega Agron cogs, but I'm assuming that a Heavy Slam might actually pick up a knockout on, uh, on this Clefairy here. Um, but Milotic is actually in a good spot, uh, I mean Azumarill is in a good spot to set up here, to set up a Belly Drum. Um, and I'm not sure what Francois is going to be able to do against that. Um, he might have something like Haze in his Milotic. Uh, which could be the case, assuming that he leads it against this, this like heavy setup team that Boyd's bringing here. Exactly. Hate would be a good way to sort of negate any belly drum attack style that Azumarill goes for, but he does then have to worry about the Clefairy just follow me in that away. Um, you know, any sort of moves coming out here. It's just going to be a little bit tr problematic here for Jamie. But first of all, it's going to be Francois going for that mega Agron that is going to be jumping onto the field. I'm so excited to see this. We're sort of at the end of the season. This is like the first time I have seen it so far. So delighted to be able to bring this here in round one. Clefairy goes for a protect though, doesn't want to take any steel type moves from that Mega Agron here, as Milotic just goes straight for a Skull. It's going to go into that Azumarill slot, not going to be dealing too much damage, but I believe it will be fishing for the burn, and which oh. it does indeed get. Little Azumarill taking a bit of chip damage, but it will get the burn, which will you know help negate some of this Belly Drum boost it's going to get. Yeah, that's really unfortunate for Jamie there. Um, Francois just, just going for it, uh, hoping for the burn, obviously, there. And I think Jamie is hoping that Francois double targeted the Clefairy instead. Um, but he actually heavy slams the Clefairy, so it's it's kind of a half uh, half decent play from Boyd here. It works it works out a little bit, but then the Scald burn is really unfortunate. Uh, I think if he didn't get that burn, he would be in a really good position. But now it's really freaky. Um, I don't think Azumarill can do a lot against this Agron at all because it has really sky high defenses. And this Azumarill is going to be able to take uh, Azumarill's attacks as well, uh, the Milotic, because it's burned now. Exactly, and water types don't mind taking water type no. attacks either, do they? Clefairy going for that little follow me, demonstrating why it is such an excellent support Pokemon here. Going to take in the attacks, but it's going to be the haze from my low tech. Um, so this is obviously going to connect into the Pokemon and negate all the stat changes. There was me saying you can follow me that away earlier, uh, but I was incorrect there. It's going to be the play rough coming out into my low tech. Going to do a little bit of chip damage as that Agron takes the sky, going to slam down onto the Clefairy, and wow. it is enough to pick up the KO, just like you said earlier, Rob. That Agron is strong. That is really strong, and we see. The, the haze as well from the Milotic. And yeah, this is not a good good game one for Jamie at all. Uh, Francois is showing all of the text that he has against this uh, this Azumarill setup. And yeah, it's working out really well for him. And I'm not sure if, if Jamie has the Pokemon that back to, to carry this win still. Uh, but Komao is a good Pokemon to have <laughs> against these two. Exactly. It looks like Jamie's really got the setup strategy going on here with the Zoom Reel with Belly Drum and Komoa with that elusive Clangor Soul Blaze Z move that we've seen it use so much this season. Yeah, definitely. So I'm really assuming that, um, but it's not really a safe setup at all here for Komo, because uh, I'm not sure if Play Rough and a combination of the Clangorous Soul Blaze is actually able to pick up the KO on Milotic here. So yeah, if, if I'm Francois, you'd probably just want to go for maybe another Haze and and just heavy slam this Azumarill Nate this turn. Uh, so I think Jamie is still in a really tough spot. Um, 
Yeah, so I'm not I'm not sure what 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 he's gonna do here. Well, goes on the defensive. Kamoa not gonna be going for the Z move this turn. Just goes for a protect. Maybe to scout out what Frontier wants to be going for. It's gonna be that haze again. Something Jamie does have to worry about if he gets all those boosts with Kamoa. This Milotic can just get rid of them. Azumarill going for another play rough though. Just gonna keep chipping away at that Milotic. Just wants to remove the haze threat. As once again, it's that heavy slam coming out from the Agron. Yeah, so really smart play by Jamie there. Uh, he's just trying to put the Milotic into Clangor Soul Blaze range. Uh, which I'm still not 100% sure if it actually is, because Milotic is really especially bulky. Um, but maybe a combination of uh, an Aqua Jet and Clangor Soul Blaze might be enough to just uh, do pick up the KO on Milotic without proccing uh, the potential berry, which we see a lot on Milotic. Uh, so I'm that's, that's assuming what, what he's going for here. And I think he needs to get this uh, potential roll uh, if he wants mm -hmm. uh, to have a shot at this game, because I think if, if Francois gets off another Haze as he goes for the Z-move, then I think this game is pretty much over. So, yeah, it's just... But Francois is taking his time here because we saw that Boyd already uh, locked in his moves. Yeah, he knows exactly what he wants to do. And potentially, you know, if I'm Jamie right now, I'd probably want that Tapu Bulu on the field just to yeah. get rid of my low tick. Don't have to worry about Haze. But my low tick going for the protect here, maybe predicting that, you know, the Aqua Jet and Z move combination is going to come out just like you said, Rob. And that's exactly yeah. protect. Does about a third to the Agron. Um, obviously, my low tick protecting not going to be moving this turn as Kamoa will get all of its attacks that it's going to be hoping to cling on to. You know, going to try and avoid Haze um, and not have it. But Agron has Dragon. Oh. Oh my tail. God. Francois wow. has all the answers here. Going for Dragon Tail, and that's going to shoot Kamoe right back out and bring in the Gengar, revealing Jamie's last Pokemon there in the back. But, I mean, all of these techs there, this is the team Jamie does not want to face. No, it's <laughs> crazy. It's like Francois has all the techs ready for Kamoe here. And, and yeah, but at least, bo at least Jamie's learning all of these techs in game one now. Yes. Because I feel like Francois is maybe showing a bit too much. He, he's been in a good position uh, the whole time, and maybe he's showing a bit too much of his techs. Uh, maybe he's, he should have. Yeah, maybe he should have kept the Dragon Tail for potential game two. Um, but it does put him in a really, really good spot at the moment. Um, and Gengar, I don't think it's it's able to pick up the KO on any of these two Pokemon here. Maybe with Aqua Jet help, uh, it's it's able to. But I think it's going to be really tricky for, for Jamie now, uh, especially without the boost on Kamo, which I think he really needed in this matchup. Exactly. With the three remaining Pokemon he's got, it's going to be hard to take down the full team of Francois there. And you can see Jamie was taking his time as well, really thinking out sort of the end game here that's going to happen. Revealing the Mega on his side to be the Mega Gengar, though, a Pokemon that he has loved to use throughout all of the seasons, um, using it a lot in 2016 as well. As Agron this time goes on the defensive, going to set up a Protect, doesn't want to take any damage from any of these Pokemon here, potentially an Aqua Jet, which is what Jamie's gone for, but in going into that Milotic, still going to just keep trying to chip away at this Pokemon as Gengar goes for a Sludge Bomb. You know, the speedy Gengar there, is it enough? And it is. Milotic is yeah. finally removed from the field for Jamie. He can breathe a little sigh of relief here, but he now can't boost his Kamoa. Yeah, he, there was a good turn by Jamie, he called to protect on uh, on Agron's side, uh, and it picks up the KO on Milotic, which is uh, kind of an, a big threat to the combo in the back as well. Uh, I'm not sure how much a Shadow Ball is going to do to um, to Mega Agron, um, but that could be interesting as well in the next turn. And I think we're going to see, ooh, and we see the Cresselia on Francois' yeah. end. And if you're Jamie, that's not really a Pokemon that you want to see here, um, because Gengar is not going to be able to pick up the KO with just the Shadow Ball. Uh, and yeah, the Azumarill is burned, so an Aqua Jet is not going to hurt it as much as well. Um, so exactly. if you're Francois, you probably you probably just want to set up your Trick Room and maybe let Aragorn just, just sweep the entire game from here. Exactly. Looking at Jamie's Pokemon there, you've got the Gengar, super speedy. Azumarill, it's, it, it doesn't really matter what the speed terrain is going to be here because it can just keep firing Aqua Jets. There's no tap, Tapu Lele preventing that from happening. Yeah. And that's exactly what we see happening. Going to be the Aqua Jet into the Aggron. It does a tiny amount of damage there. A Shadow Ball comes out from Gengar going into the Mega Aggron. So we're going to see how much it does. Oh, it does do about a good third of damage there. So that's good knowledge for Jamie going into the next couple of turns. As Heavy Slam once again shoots up into the air, comes right down onto that Gengar as Cresselia goes for the Trick Room. So now Agron is in such a great position to just sort of keep dealing out the damage in the slow Trick Room. But with the low health it's got, Azumarill might be able to pick up the KO with Aqua Jet there. Yeah, it should be able to pick up the one KO with Aqua Jet. Um, but I think just, just the, the Trick Room getting up here for Jamie, it's, it's a big problem. Um, because he needs his Gengar to be able to do something to the Cresselia. Because mm -hmm. uh, Azumarill burnt, it's not going to be able to do anything to it. Komo doesn't really want to face Cresselia as, as well. So I think, yeah, the Cresselia on France's end should be able to take out the game from here. Well, Agron going for a protect, knowing it's going to be the target. But actually, Jamie reads into this, goes for the ice, um, goes for the um, attack into Cresselia as it goes for an icy wind. Interesting choice, seeing as it's in a trick room environment. But even then, he just wants to get the chip onto that Gengar and remove it from the field. Again, the speed doesn't matter too much in the reel. It's clicking Aqua Jet every turn. Yeah, I think Jamie was there hoping that he uh, either that either Francois was targeting down the um and not the Gengar, so that maybe Aqua Jet Shadow Ball could be able to pick up the knockout uh, if. I actually win potentially missed. Mm -hmm. uh, so Jamie's at least playing to his out there. Um, but I've, 
I just don't see any outs at this point anymore. <laughs> um, I think it's going to be really tricky. I guess if Cresselia doesn't have any psychic moves, um, maybe Komao can do something, but it's it's not going to be able to 1v1 this, this Cresselia. No. So I think Jamie just should use his time now to think about a, a better game 2 plan, because now he knows about all the text from Francois's end, so he should be able to, to adjust in a way. Um, and he I'm not sure. Experience. I'm not sure how, because it's it's really tricky. Because he he's got the haze, he's got the dragon tail, and he's got the Cresselia as well, threatening a trick room. Um, so it's going to be really tough, I think, for Jamie in this game. Uh, game two. He does get a cheeky little critical hit there on the Agron and will remove it from the field Pokemon that's given him a lot of trouble so far this yeah. game. As Cresselia goes for an Icy Wind, going to connect on both of Jamie's Pokemon, going to reduce the speed and just keep chipping away at that Azumarill. You know, it got its belly drum up, but it has been burnt and it's just slowly been whittling its health away, but it's clinging on at the moment in this game one. As Kamoa goes for the Clanging Stales, single target will do a little bit more damage than usual, but as you can see, it's barely enough to really threaten this Cresselia. And as its defense is falling as well, that's potentially not going to put it in a good position going forward. No, but at least Jamie now... Uh, uh, is learning about Francois' last Pokemon, so mm -hmm. that, that could help him as well with coming up with a better um, Game 2 plan. Ooh, um, Yeah, that's interesting. Um, Heatran doesn't like Azumarill. No, and he doesn't really like Komo as well, uh, assuming that he, Jamie runs uh, a fighting type move on Komo, because we've seen Komo as well run uh, something like Substitute mm -hmm. or another coverage move, and sometimes dropping the fighting move. Um, so I guess it is good good knowledge for Jamie to at least learn this. I don't think he can still take this, but Heatran is going for Protect instead in Trick Room. Yeah, Azumarill going for that Aqua Jack. Going to go straight into the Protect, so a good Protect there um, mm. from Swat. And as you can see, it's the close combat as well, so it does have the Fighting type move. That's good knowledge as well, knowing that he's got the Mega Aggron on the field. I know his defense is really, really high, but still, it doesn't want to take a close combat necessarily. No, no. Uh, and with the, the Filter ability, it's probably able to take a close combat, but it, yeah, it, doesn't, it really doesn't want to take it at all. Um, so Jamie is, is revealing that he has close combat. And I'm not sure if that's if, if that was wise to do because you're kind of refueling your combo moves at here. Exactly. Um, yeah, and Francois, I think if he if he just connects his next icy winds, uh, potential heat waves, uh, he should be he should be taking the game. Well, Azumarill going for one last ditch attempt here. It's going to be the Aqua Jet, but as you can see, it barely does anything to Heatran thanks to the burn. As Cresselia just keeps going for these icy winds, it's got its accuracy in check now, and it keeps hitting them constantly. Yeah. And I think at the end of this turn, Azumarill will be being KO'd by its burn. As you can see, it's only on 10 hit points remaining there, so we will be losing Azumarill, so it'll all be down to this Komoo. But it has to take an Earth Power, first of all, from the Heatran. It will be KO'd, and then as we can see, Azumarill will be KO'd as well. So unfortunately for Jamie, it's a loss here, but incredible game from Francois there. He had every Every counter to this, which is yeah. great knowledge in the meta game with Komoo everywhere at the moment. Yeah, exactly. So he, he probably really studied and he, he knew what he what he had to prepare for, and he knew Komoo was one of these popular teams at the moment. So you got to be ready for that. And yeah, I think for Jamie it's going to be really tough now. How are you gonna How are you gonna adjust this game too? Uh, because the team is so reliant on setup. Um, and you, you could say, yeah, maybe he has to bring the Tapu Bulu, but the Tapu yes. Bulu doesn't want to face this uh, Agron Agron, at all. exactly. Those so heavy slams will hurt. <laughs> yeah, so just a combination of Milotic and Agron, and then with Cresselia on the back as well to threaten the Trick Room, uh, it's really tricky. And yeah, maybe he has to play around with the Gengar Trap maybe a little bit. Because um, as we saw, it could take a heavy slam from the from the Agron. Um, but I'm assuming that... that yeah, I'm, I'm just not sure how he's going to stop this this combination. No, I mean, the Milotic certainly gave him a lot of trouble at the beginning. I mean, he's got the options there of Tapu Bulu, as you mentioned. He does also have the Pikachu. I'm just putting yeah. it out there. Yeah. It's probably running Volt Tackle. We've got no idea at the moment. But if it can start you know, getting the KOs on that Milotic between Tapu Bulu or Pikachu, then at least that's one. It's a haze set removed from there. We sort of spoke about um, Dragon Tail as well. That can be follow me away, potentially. And mm -hmm. obviously, if it goes into a fairy type. It's not going to be not going to be too good. No, um, no. But yeah, it's going to be hard because Francois has such good synergy on his team, particularly yeah. with that Mega Agron. Yeah, so that's going to be really tough. Uh, yeah, I really hope we're going to see the Pikachu. I'd love uh, to see I it. I have no <laughs> idea how much full tackle does to Milotic. Um, but with, if, if, if I'm assuming that it has the light ball, uh, it could it could pick up the knockout. I'm really not sure my my Pikachu calc here, but <laughs> it could KO a Kyogre in 2016. Yeah, exactly. I remember oh, that. Then it, then it, yeah, it should be it should be able to pick up the KO Milotic as well. So and we see here. the Pikachu. I am so happy it's Pikachu on the field for Jamie Boyd paired up with the Gengar, the Generation One Pokemon here in Force. As Francois changes it up as well, and it's going to be Heatran and that Mega Agron as well. So two sort of fierce Steel type Pokemon looking down these adorable two on Jamie's side. Yeah, so it looks like Francois uh, was kind of reading into the change up from Jamie. Um, because I think if Jamie led something like Azumarill Clefairy again, he would be in a really, really good spot. Because um, he's just facing two Steel types, the Heatran doesn't want to face Azumarill at all. Uh, we saw the Aggron as Dragon Tail, but that doesn't that doesn't affect Azumarill at all. Um, so I think Jamie's kind of uh, yeah, he's, he's kind of lucky there. He did us go with Azumarill the next time. Uh, but a good read by Francois, and he has a good lead again, I think here. 
Uh, because the Heatran is just threatening Earth Power on this both of these Pokemon. Exactly. We know the Heatran's packing that move, and it's a ground type move that nobody wants to be taking at the moment. Gengar going to go for the Mega Evolution, though, going to trap these two Pokemon in. So hopefully, Pikachu can have some sort of combination attack here that's going to be able to win it for him. Yeah. But Mega Evolution across both trainers are here, going to get Mega Aggro and Mega Gengar on the field. Um, we haven't seen too much from this Gengar, though. So you never know, it could be running something a little bit more quirky. Uh, but it's just going to be the double protect from Jamie. No fake out coming out from that Pikachu either. Um, just wants to protect and maybe scout out what Francois is going to do. Going to be the heat wave going onto both the Pokemon um, from Francois, but obviously the protect is going to protect him there. And the heavy slam is going into Gengar. So really targeting down the Gengar slot here. Yeah, because he just wants to get rid of this trap uh, for sure. Uh, he knows Pikachu isn't really the threat at this point. And I think maybe JB was uh, hoping that it could maybe go for uh, an Encore Disable Trap. Because uh, Pikachu is, is one of those Pokemon that gets Encore and is, is relatively fast. It should be faster than the Heatran and the Aggron. So maybe he was fishing for that, that, that Francois would maybe mm -hmm. double protect uh, for a potential fake out. Uh, but Francois is not going to fall for that. Uh, you know, he knows probably that, that Pikachu is able to learn Encore. And this puts Jamie in a really tough position because he already protected. And I don't think he has a lot of Pokemon that want to switch into a combination of a Heat Wave and a Heavy Slam. Exactly, and it sort of covers all things. Disable. Yeah, going to be the Disable coming out from Gengar. We were sort of saying it has got a few quirky tricks. It hasn't been revealed, and it is going to be the Disable Encore combination. These two little Pokemon shutting down this Gengar. Um, sorry, shutting down the Aggron here. So it's not going to be able to go for those moves. Heatran, though, still free to go for an Earth Power. Going to go into that Gengar slot, but it is trained to survive that. So great training on Jamie Boyd's here, yep. side here, and just a fantastic play with Gengar and Pikachu. It did good. Yeah, it did, it did. So that was that was really good. So he basically shut down his Aggron completely. Um, but the Heatran still did a lot of damage to this Gengar now. So it's still really fr really tricky. Um, because now next turn, Aggron's going to go for a struggle. Mm -hmm. And I think Jamie really has to hope that the struggle is not going to go into the Gengar slot. <laughs> exactly. Doesn't want to get KO'd um, yeah. sort of accidentally by his, his own creation. You know, locking it down to make it struggle and then it still picks up the KO anyway. Yeah. Um, but we will have to see what will happen, particularly with this Heatran. Um, it is trapped in at the moment, probably just going to go for another Earth Power. So this would be a good switch in for something like, I was going to say, Komoa or potentially Tapu Bulu. If it's going to be, you know, Earth Powering away, Tapu Bulu's not going to mind that as much. Going to be for the Protect, though, from Gengar. And it's Heat Rave from the um, Heatran, you know, potentially covering in a, um, a switch in like that. Um, Komoa is easily going to be able to take that, though. So great switch in. And where is the struggle going into? Going into the Komoa. So this wow. turn worked out okay for Jamie. And he's now in a position where he could potentially get the Z move off. Yeah. Yeah, so that's really good for Jamie. Uh, I'm still surprised how much that struggle still did to come out. Mm -hmm. That Mega Aggron has a lot of attack. and But now he's in actually a really good position at the moment. Uh, he can just go for the Z-move here. We, he knows Aggron is completely trapped. Um, but Heatran, yeah, Heatran is still under the threat of being disabled. And maybe Jamie just wants to switch out his Gengar here. Maybe go into Pikachu again uh, for the potential fake out option. Now we see him go into Azumarill instead. Going to be the f um, uh, fourth and final Pokemon reveal for Jamie Boy. It's going to be that Azum. So a close combat into Heatran and a Belly Drum is actually pretty free at this point. So Jamie really put himself in a good position, uh, really just playing around all these attacks that, that Francois had. Exactly. And uh, using his, his Gengar trap really well. Yeah, he shut down the Dragon Tail option on that Aggron. The Azumarill's going to take an Earth Power, um, going to take down to almost 50 there as another struggle goes into Komoa, but you can see the recoil coming back on that Aggron as well. Although yeah. his Encore has ended, you know, he still has a move disabled, but he might just want to switch out here and protect it and bring it back in later. But, you know, I think Azumarill's going to maybe click that Belly Drum button now. Yeah, I assume so. Um, I think what we've seen from Game 1, is that an Earth Power? Because I'm assuming that... that uh, you first want to KO the Aggron here, because that's really threatening the Zoomerill, and the Heatran isn't really at all. So we may see in Clanging Scales, maybe a Flamethrower, depends on the, the coverage that he has. Going to be the Flamethrower going into that Steel-type Aggron, not going to appreciate this at all, and will be KO'd. So Jamie Boy getting revenge on that Aggron that gave him so much trouble in Game 1. And it's going to be a Z-move coming out from Francois this time. Going to oh. be the Bloom Doom. Um, such an interesting tech on Heatran, you know, helps protect it from things like Tapu Fini. Um, but what a great move to be coming out facing down a Zoomerill. Wow, I, I d Jamie was not expecting that <laughs> at all, and neither were we. And now now this Azumarill is just going to be gone, and, and that's really big for Francois, uh, especially if he has something like Cresselia on the back. Oh, and I think Jamie was really counting on getting that set up, and I think he might have needed it as well, uh, because his Gengar is at really low health, and Komo is also, it, took a it still took a lot of damage from switching in from these struggles. Uh, it's at 40% HP remaining, so it kind of really depends on what Francois is in the back. 
And if it's something like this Mylotic, maybe, uh, I think Jamie could be could be in trouble. This is really a nightmare game here for Jamie Boyd, but Francois just has so many interesting techs. And we sort of mentioned that he maybe revealed that Dragon Tail a little bit too early in game one, yeah. but he still had more tricks up his sleeve to reveal here in game two. Yeah. And now that Mylotic's on the field, unless Jamie can pick up the KO with this little Pikachu, we know it can click Haze. Yeah, that's true. Um, but on the other hand, he, he doesn't have to go for the KO right away. Uh, I think the safest play here just probably to fake out the Mylotic, maybe close combat to Heatran. Um, because we know this Pikachu has Encore as well. So mm -hmm. if Mylotic protects, you can just Encore it next turn. Uh, so he's still in a good position here. And I think if the, yeah, it just depends on what Francois is in the back. I think it is Cresselia. You probably want to switch it in right now. Well, Mylotic leaving the field, and then it is the Cresselia yeah. coming in here, potentially protecting itself from taking Volt Tackle from this Pikachu. Going to be protected as well from Heatran, so maybe scouting out the Fake Out or something going along here. There's no Gengar to trap you in, so Pikachu, um, you could switch out if needs be. Heatran protecting from the close combat, though, and it's going to be the Volt Tackle from Pikachu going into Cresselia. Wow. It still does such a huge amount of damage. This little electric mouse is so powerful here. That's a lot of damage to a Cresselia as well. That's insane. That's Go, Pikachu. So, Jamie was just playing the turn. He obviously knows his Pikachu card. And judging from the damage that it did cr to Cresselia, that would have definitely picked up the KO on Mylotic as well. Exactly. Um, so Francois is maybe a bit disappointed at that, uh, because he took a lot of unnecessary damage on Cres his Cresselia there, which I think is his wink on it at this point. Um, so I think yeah, it's really up to Jamie now to target down this Cresselia, uh, and I think then Kamo oh, should have the game here. So, so Francois has to be really careful here. Yeah, uh, Kamo can go for something like a um, close combat into the, the Heatran slot, but it has switched out. It's going to be the Milotic, and it's whether Jamie Boyd can maybe predict something like this happening. Flamethrower oh, going is he doubling into up? the Cresselia, going to be doing some good chip damage, and it's going to be the Volt Tackle doubling up wow. into that slot, and it will be enough to pick up the KOs. So this little Pikachu taking down the Cresselia, the sort of bulkiest Pokemon we know. Yeah, that's crazy. That's a really good read by Boyd again. He predicted the switch out from, from Francois, and that puts actually Boyd in, in, in a winning position here, because I have Volt Tackle and a close combat. Should just seal up the game here. And after this cla the crazy bloom room from the Heatran, I didn't think Jamie still had the resources to pull it back. But this little Pikachu just did it's so doing much so damage. Good. Yeah. And you can see our players now on the stream as well. We've got our um, player cams up and running. And you can see how calm and composed both these players are, though, as well. Yeah. They are so focused. And I think it's been this sort of focused and intense set that they've been doing that's allowed them to kind of keep their cool and keep revealing all these little things at the right time. And Jamie revealed the power of Pikachu just at the right time here. He's trying going for the protect, though, as Kamoa goes for close combat into that slot. And I believe we will just be seeing the Volt Tackle come out here, going into the Milotic. Let's just see this angry little. Pikachu how much damage it's going to do wow. and it picks up yeah. the KO. Pikachu, you know, just causing destruction here. This is crazy. What a game. Pikachu actually knocks out itself, but it did its job. <laughs> it, it can have a rest. It can have a rest <laughs> now. That I thought I thought we, Jamie was just going to bring it, you know, just for fun. He's going to bring Pikachu and it actually did a lot of work. It, it was crazy. It's not a meme. It's, it's a real a meme, thing. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> apparently not. And yeah, Francois, um, I think he I think at the moment that he got off that bloom, I think he really thought that he had the game here. Um, so he really has to go back and think, ooh, what, what went wrong? What went wrong in the game two? You underestimate Pikachu. He definitely did, yeah. He didn't, <laughs> because we saw he didn't target it down a lot at all. He, he left it on the field a lot of turns. Um, yeah, and Pikachu doesn't really have a lot of HP, a lot of defense. So it's, it's like once you target it down, it's going to go down. Uh, but he kind of ignored it, and that really came back to haunt him in the end. It really did. But as well, it's good information for him with that Pikachu, because yeah. sometimes they're on Focus Sash, and they are just that sort mm -hmm. of little support Pokemon there. And seeing the damage that came off from that Pikachu, you now know it's Light Ball. Yeah, definitely. You know it's packing that item, and it can just deal out all this damage. But, you know, incredible play there from Jamie Boy. Like you said, when we saw that Bloom Doom come off, I thought Francois had won that. You yeah. know, he was in such a great position, and... Jamie then just comes in, says, I've got a tech for you as well, and reveals that little Pikachu's power. So fantastic game. And it's a game three straight away here in Sheffield. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think I think Francois still has the tools for it. Uh, I think Jamie played this one really well. Uh, he called a lot of protects and switches on Francois as end. Because um, I still think Francois maybe would have switched in the, um, the, the Cresselia on a different slot in mm -hmm. the close combat. Uh, it would have taken less damage. The combo would have gotten defense drops. And I think then it might have, it might have still have sealed the game. Um, but he decided to do it the other way around. Um, so I think that's something that he really has to take care of into Game 3. He really has to preserve his Cresselia better. Yes. Do um, you think there'll be much change up in the team composition from Francois, or do you think he's going to stick with the four? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he if he doesn't lead Heatran again, if he just goes maybe aggro on Milotic again. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because, uh, yeah, he's, he's got to be afraid of the <laughs> of what happened last game. And, I mean, Heatran, it did, it did well against the, the potential lead at first, like against the Gengar Pikachu. Uh, but other than that, it was kind of, yeah. And now Jamie, of course, knows that it's, it's Bloom Doom Heatran. Exactly, he's so got that information. Yeah. 
Uh, so it's, good. it's really tricky for, for Francois. I wonder if there's going to be any more secret text revealed by Francois here. He no. sort of revealed lots of them on all different Pokemon at the moment, but we have yet to see, you know, the Landorus or the Tapu Bulu. Who knows what they could be packing? Yeah, I don't think he's going to bring Bulu, especially with the, the Gengar and the Komao as well. Uh, Bulu doesn't really, even though it, it, it resists Komao's attack, well, except the Flame Char, it doesn't really do a lot back at all. Mm. Uh, so I think Francois is fine with just going with the same four again. Um, but I think it just if he preserves his Cresselia better than he did in, uh, in game two, uh, I think he should be fine. Um, yeah, but still, Jamie really, he has the trap, he has the disable Encore mm -hmm. option, and he has the setup option. So it's a lot of things to keep in mind if you're Francois. Well, slight change up. It's going to be Cresselia and Landorus, a Pokemon we've seen so much in this format, but we've only just seen it now in game three of this set. Yeah. And Pikachu is back in action, paired up with Komoa as well. So what do you think of this position here? Yeah, I think Francois was uh, maybe assuming that Jamie would go for the same thing again, uh, like in game two. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why he brought the Landorus. Uh, he, he was assuming a Pikachu Gengar lead probably again. Um, but Landers is still in an okay position here. Um, the Landers Cresselia option looks kind of tricky for, for Jamie uh, because you got the Ice Wind pressure, but you also have the Earthquake pressure into this Pikachu. Um, and yeah, we saw Jamie not bring Bulu in game one and mm -hmm. in game two, so I'm, I don't think he actually would bring it again in, in this game three, especially with the two Steel types that Francois has. So I think an Earthquake and an Icy Wind, uh, it's going to be really tricky for Jamie to, to play around that. Exactly. He's got to wonder whether maybe he goes for something like the fake out to get the setup straight away that he wants, but then he's got to worry about potentially, you know, there could be the Z move on that Landorus yeah. as well. It could be packing that Tectonic Rage, um, and Cresselia could easily go for Trick Room here. But you can see from the timer here, Francois is really, really taking his time. He's thinking it through, doesn't want to mess up turn one and put himself in such a great position straight out the bat. Going to be a switch out though for Jamie Boyd, switches out one setup Pokemon for another as Azumarill joins the field. Pikachu dashing forward, going to just go for the fake out into Landorus as Trick Room comes out from Cresselia. So, in Interesting to have the Azumarill on the field now that can Aqua Jet regardless of the speed. Yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, we still don't know what kind of item this Landorus has. Um, but yeah, Azumarill is actually looking really good in Trick Room right now. Um, but again, an Aqua Jet should not at neutral. If, I don't think it should be able to pick up the KO on this Landorus No, here. it needs some boosts. Um, and it's really tricky because Pikachu, I think uh, Jamie is running a really fast Pikachu. So he's, he's not going to be certain if it's going to be faster than the Landorus or not. Uh, and if it even has a coverage to hit this Landorus. Could be a cheeky hidden power ice. It could be, um, um, but I don't think it's still not really free for Jamie to set up here um, because it's just a combination of earthquake and maybe a psychic or any kind of uh, attack from Australia is still going to hurt a lot. Going to be protecting the Pikachu this turn by switching out and Komoa rejoins the field. Azumarill just going for a protect, maybe predicting it was going to be the target so that, you know, Francois can kind of stop any setup happening here as Landorus goes for an earthquake. Not going to hurt its buddy Cresselia on Francois' side of the field. Um, I'm not going to attack that Azumarill, but Komoa will have to take some of this earthquake damage here. Yeah, that, ooh, that takes quite a bit from this Earthquake. And we see Cresselia move lost, and we see it reversing the Trick Room here. Um, so that puts Francois in an interesting position again. Um, I think, yeah, Jamie just... He, Francois really recognizes that Jamie didn't really want to bring the Tapu Bulu against this matchup. Mm -hmm. And just this pressure of the, the constant Earthquakes just do a lot of damage against both of uh, Jamie's Pokémon. And they both want to set up, but they, yeah, they can't take too much damage doing so. And I think I'm just now a combination of Earthquake and I think Icy Wind uh, should be able to pick up the KO and Kamao here and do a lot of damage to Azumarill as well. Yeah, Jamie so far hasn't dealt really any damage to no. Francois' side of the field, whereas it, you know, his own Komoa has had to take nearly 50% on the switch in there. Um, so he does need to start going on the offensive a little bit maybe if he wants to take this game three. Um, going to be the Aqua Jet coming out from the Azumarill into the Milotic switch in, so great switch in there from Francois. Yeah. And it's going to be... The Easily, actually. Exactly, you need Pikachu back on the field here um, to be able to negate that Milotic and everything that it does. You can see Komoro getting its boost, but I feel like it's not going to be able to keep them for too long now. Milotic's on the field. Icy Wind coming out from Cresselia, once again keeping its accuracy strong, going to connect on both of Jamie's Pokemon and lower their speed. Trick Room has been reversed now, so we're all back to normal. These speed drops do really matter in the game at the moment. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what Jamie's going to do with the threat of Milotic now. Yeah, um... What I'm, what I'm thinking maybe is, I'm not sure how much a close combat is going to do to Milotic, but it could be able to pick up the KO here. And I think actually Jamie is in a really good position to just set up with Azumarill. Um, and maybe he just wants to bring the Milotic into Aqua Jet range, or maybe he just wants to go for another Clang or Soul Blaze. Um, or Clang skills, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he just wants to set up with Azumarill here. Well, Francois going for the Protect here, maybe just wants to draw in all of Jamie's attacks here, and that's exactly what we can see, the close combat going into the Protect, as Cresselia goes for another Icy Wind. Azumarill hasn't moved as of yet, though, so it's going to be interesting to see if it's going for a Belly Drum on this occasion. But one thing Jamie does have to worry about is his speeds are just constantly being yeah. dropped here, and if that Milotic can outspeed, get a haze off, it's just going to negate all of this hard work Jamie's doing. Belly Drum has been clicked, he has a boosted Komoro, a boosted Azumarill, 
but there is haze on the field. Now, what are your thoughts about the speed right now? They've had two icy wind drops. Yeah, that's a good turn by Francois. Um, because I think Jamie was hoping to either knock out this Milotic, um, or he could go for the knockout next turn with close combat. Um, but now we've seen that uh, Komo took two icy wins, so we know that Milotic is going to be faster than Komo. And I, 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 it can't be Aqua Jet range from here, uh, especially with uh, Francois able to maybe switch in the Landers and Cresselia slot, but he doesn't do that. Maybe needs a critical hit, Aqua yeah. going into Milotic. It's Ooh, not yeah. enough. It does come close, but not enough, and it will proc the Berry as well. So that Milotic is going to be better off from taking that, really, from the uh, Wiki Berry boost there. Going to be Icy Wind again from Cresselia. Just keeps wanting to whittle down all of the attack, um, all of the speed here, particularly even if there's a switch in, he could catch it yeah. um, and lower the speed straight away. Um, now, are we going to see the Haze? It is so my low tick just negating all of the hard effort that Jamie's Pokemon have put in here to boost themselves up and make themselves strong. Clangy scales coming out from Komoo would have picked up the KO if there wasn't a barrier on that my low tick, but thanks to the item it was packing, it's now still in a great position. Yeah, and yeah, and we saw just just the pressure that the landers offered in in the early turns was really big for for Jamie, uh, and it just it just really stopped his setup. And then once he finally had the time to actually set up. We just saw the Milo to come in, and it just it takes both of these attacks so well. It takes the Aqua Jets really easily, and with all these icy wind drops, it was actually faster than Komo as well. So it was just able to haze before Komo could do anything. And yeah, I think Francois is in a really good spot at the moment. Um, this Milo is free to recover, maybe. Um, but it's going to have to take the close combat here straight away. Um, going to be dropping his defenses and special defense, but it has removed the Milotic from the field. So interesting that Pokemon has now gone as Cresselia goes for another Icy Wind. Um, going to be connecting into both these Pokemon, lowering their speeds once again. And actually picks up the KO on Komoa, so they kind of trade the two Pokemon here. Yeah. Um, Azumarill are going to be lowering its speed as well. And then Jamie will be free to bring back in Pikachu, or I believe it was Gengar. Ooh. And it's another Belly Drum. So Jamie, you know, sacrificing Komoa for the sake of getting rid of that Milotic, but he's now got that boosted Azumarill, but it's only on 19 hit points. That's actually really big, because I think if Jamie now has, uh, has Gengar in the back, which I'm assuming he has, um, Cresselia is definitely a Shadow Ball range. Uh, Landorus is going to be in Aqua Jet range. Uh, we see the Pikachu switching instead. And it's Agron once again. So a little mm. Pikachu on the field facing down this monstrous form of the Agron. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting, like you said, that Azumarill has got, um, obviously, the Aqua Jet. But Cresselia is down to below 50%. We've seen that Voltaco can pick up the KO there. Yeah, but we know that Francois has the Lander switching as well on his side. Mm. So we still have to be careful about that. Um, but with the fake out from, from Pikachu here, um, Azumarill is kind of safe. Because um, uh, Cresselia should be in Aqua Jet range from here. So it should be a safe fake out and Aqua Jet into the Cresselia slot. And most of these Cresselias don't carry Protect. So, yeah, I think that's um, it's really tricky for Francois at this, at this point. Well, he's going to go Mega Evolution straight away with the Agron. Um, and I do think uh, sort of the Fake Out Aqua Jet would cover things as well, like, for example, if the Landers did want to switch in. But Agron going straight for the Protect here doesn't want to take maybe the chip from the Fake Out or any damage coming out from that Azumarill. Um, the Fake Out going into that slot, though, Paul Pikachu not going to be able to do anything really this turn as Aqua Jet goes into the Cresselia. So it's going to do a huge amount of damage and pick up the KO. Oh, yeah, I think that seals the game for Jamie here because we saw Encore and a Pikachu. Uh, so this Agron just protected, and you now can it's just it. yeah, it can it can just be locked into protect, um, and an Aqua Jet is just going to be able to pick up this Landers here, uh, not even like a, another tech item like Focus Edge, not even going to help him because it took some chip already. Exactly. Uh, so I think Francois is out of his out of his techs here, and and. I think Jamie just just won that game by I just setting Pikachu. up that really risky <laughs> belly drum in the end. Yeah, just it, that with was so 19 crucial. Nineteen HP remaining. Yeah, because he he was just he, he was he saw that Cresselia all it did the whole game the whole set actually just spam icy wind. And I mean, Azumarill's gonna take that for days. And it just, he just waited for the right time to just set up again. Exactly, and Azumarill doesn't mind its speed being dropped. Taking no. Aqua Jet, which is exactly what it goes for to pick up the KO here on the Landorus. Um, and I think, it's, like you said, Rob, it's gonna be the Encore coming out, shutting down this Agron, which can now just sit here, be Encored, and Azumarill can just keep chipping away at it. You saw the handshake there come yeah. out from the players. And I can't believe it, but Pikachu's taken round one here in Sheffield. Yeah, that's crazy. Just this combination of this cute little little Pokemon <laughs> on the field just knocked out the entire big Mega Agron on, on Francois' <laughs> side. And yeah, I think it really, really well played by Jamie. He just recognized that he, he had the opportunity to go for another Belly Drum and he needed it as well. Yeah, we see the forfeit here and you can look at both these players. Paul Francois here, sort of head in his hands. But, yeah. you know, 
huge credit to him. That game one, he was in the driving seat the mm -hmm. whole way. He had every tech, but maybe you were right. He revealed them all a little bit too soon. Um, and one of the things is you're playing Jamie Boyd, who has experience for days, particularly with quirky teams. And that's exactly what he was bringing there with the Pikachu. And he knew how to use it. Yeah. He doesn't just bring something and sort of go, I'm going to try and get CP with this or just have a little bit of fun. It has a genuine strong use on the team. And he utilized it to perfection. Yeah, it's crazy because I... I mean, you, you assume, because it's your standard combo team, so you assume, oh, this Pikachu is just here for fun. It's gonna be, <laughs> it's like one of these six <laughs> Pokemon that I'm never going to bring. Yeah, um, just for but, the stream. <laughs> yeah, but now it, it, it put in so much work. And uh, yeah, I think he's really happy now that he brought his Pikachu, actually. Oh, 100%. Yeah. It actually put in so much work. And, you know, he didn't bring it around um, game one. And no. I think that was honestly his crucial mistake. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, f I just think it's really, uh, really impressive how he just beat this this team because Francois he had a lot of attacks against mm -hmm. the setup. And I think it also shows like the, the power of combo teams and just with Gengar, with Fake Out support, with Encore, Disable support as well. Uh, and there are just so many options. And I think Jamie really recognized the way that he had to set up in, yes. in both these games. Because uh, in game one, he just went for like the safe follow me setup, kind of like the, the standard combo setup way. Um, but then with Azumarill, um, but he saw that it, that Francois had tags for that, so he had to he had yes. to adapt. He had to change up his game plan, and I think he did that really well. He kept a cool head and yeah. didn't let it intimidate him or no. sort of give up. He just focused, took all the time that he needed to do. We didn't even see my time run down too much no. as well. He just utilized every second to perfection. And I think we will be grabbing him for an interview very, very quickly. So don't go anywhere, trainers. We're going to hear all about Pikachu in a minute.
Hello, Pokemon trainers, and welcome back. I am joined by our round one winner for the interview, Jamie Boyd, the Pikachu master. Like, oh, it's only been one round. It's only <laughs> been one round. Yeah, but you know, it was one incredible round. Yeah. How are you feeling after that intense best of three? That was. That was. I. I think that was one of the best round ones on stream, probably for a while. Like it had a Pikachu. I'm yeah. biased. No, like, like <laughs> he had all the techs. Like mm -hmm. I. I thought. I was going to sweep with the zoom roll. Like a zoom roll just bodied the team. In the game and too. And then just yeah, he has haze. Okay, can't do mm -hmm. that. He burned me anyway. Like he burned me, and then it, like I think I took like what ten rounds of burn damage. You just, just stayed on, on the, the field. field. Yeah, no, it, it, it was useless. But um, yeah, that, like I thought I was fine. Okay, okay, I have to sweep with Como out. Nope, it's gone. And then yeah, and then game two, I thought, yep, Como is set up. A zoom roll is going to set up. No. Nope. Yeah. No. So, yeah. He no. He had all the techs. It was brilliant. What was sort of going through your mind in team preview, looking at his team? We were obviously interested by the Mega Agron, a little distracted by the Pikachu, but Mega Agron was still a really interesting Pokemon here, and he had a lot of the usual Pokemon there, like Tapu Bulu and Landorus. Could you see a clear strategy from him, or were you still trying to figure it out and adjust it to your own? It felt like kind of, like, a, like the team looked like it had really good team synergy, so I thought it would it would just like um, be able to position really well. So against position, hard setup is really good, because as soon as you get a set up, set up once, you can um, break their positioning and then just sweep through. You force but, them to switch, But, but then, you? yeah, like I, I did think I was just going to sweep the game with either Azuma or Como Owens, and I really had to struggle to do that. Well, you actually swept with Pikachu. Pikachu was amazing. <laughs> Talk Pikachu to us a little everything. bit about that. You know, it, it's a Pokemon that, I mean, I've used it before at regional championships, not so much success, but it's a Pokemon one we've seen a lot of the times about John Who has used it. What made you pick this Pokemon for this regional? Fun. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm not too bothered with this regional. Like, I've, I've got my day two secured. I probably should be more interested in, like, reaching, like, top four before Ohio, but, you know, I've got to have some fun. And I was just looking at some Pikachu calcs, and it gets some amazing KOs, so... We like, saw the damage yeah. it did to Cresselia as yeah. well. Yeah, it almost it did half amazing. to a Cresselia. It did, like, 45% to a Cresselia. That's insane. And obviously, the Encore Disable, that classic combination with the Gengar. Yeah. Um, you sort of mentioned as we were walking over to the interview that that was something you only put on it within the last yeah. 24 no, hours. Yeah, no, I, like, I, I was, like, debating Faint or Helping Hand. Faint or Helping Hand. Let's go with Encore. What and made then, you choose yeah, Encore? Uh, because I put, I put Disable on my Gengar the day before as well. And you so it, it was Icy Wind for ages, and then, yeah, I've, I've got the Encore Disable. So, yeah, no, I was, I was a big fan of the Encore Disable when I've been using the Salazzlers and Togekiss as well, although I've fallen out with Togekiss. So, oh, no, what yeah. happened? Oh, I missed the Encore to um, lose me top four. Um, it needs the end to train of Brazil, harder. Yeah. yeah, I know, right? Really but, needs yeah, to train yeah, harder. Yeah, yeah like, it, 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 it was just, it's just for some fun, and Pikachu's already shown its worth. So <laughs> I'm, I'm already more than content with my team choice. So. Well, I think it's very fitting. We have an Eevee on the background, and <laughs> Pikachu was just on stream, you know, with the new games just revealed, very, very exciting. But one thing as well I just want to talk about, there was a particular turn in there, um, particularly in game two, where everything was all being set up, you were in a great position, and then the Bloom Doom got revealed. Just talk us through what you were thinking then to have to regroup and take that game. Like, I had the, the first three turns mapped out, like, flawlessly. Like, I was double protect, Encore Disable, switch, um, get the Clang Risk Soul, Soul Blaze, switch into the Azumarill as I Clang so that I can belly drum the next turn. Like, I had it all set out, and then just on the very final part of that plan, I couldn't belly drum. So, yeah, no, like, that, that, but that, that gave me a, a switch back into Pikachu, so I was able to fake out and then um, do um, good things with Kamo. So, I don't think I swept with it. I think Pikachu had to come in the end. To, well, Pikachu just cleaned up. It, yeah. it was an yeah. absolute master there. Right, well, we just got one more thing to do here on the interview. Um, something Limitless and Play Championships are sort of trying to do this season. We have little fairy tale Vaporeon here, and we have, he's knocked it over, a little fortune cookie. <laughs> and we're going to be taking everyone's fortune on the winner's interview. So, cool. let's predict your fortune for the rest of the tournament. A little fortune teller Vaporeon here. Very wise. All right. The art of life is both holding and letting go. Okay. It could be how a little does, bit with could be a little bit with Volt Tackle. You have to give and take a little bit. You do some good damage, you take a little recoil. It's quite fitting for the Pikachu. Yeah. That's that's yeah, what Vaporeon that. is yeah. saying to me in regards of that. But we're not gonna keep you any longer. Um, we're gonna be jumping into round two very soon, I believe. So go have a rest and congratulations once again. Thank you. Don't go anywhere, trainers. We will be back very, very soon for round two.